Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Disco Bot tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up the interactivity module in D Sharp Plus. It lets us do things such as listening in for when people send messages to respond based on what they said. Same with uh, reactions to embeds and messages when they do emoji reactions, you can respond based on which emoji they used. There's plenty of other uses of it and I could go on and on about them. That's what we're going to be covering over the next few videos. We're going to be using this a lot, but I'll show you this video how to set it up and make some basic commands using it. So let's get to the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Heidi, Rene, Evgeny, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my patrons down below. If not, there are also links down below to social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, it'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the coding. Okay, let's get into this real quickly and get it over with, because it's not much to do, to be honest. It's gonna be quite a simple video. We just want to add a reference to a, um, if I can type, interactivity extension like so, and we'll just call it interactivity. And we'll make it a getter private set. So we can set it in here, but get access to it elsewhere. And just like here, how we've got a commands here, we've got an interactivity here, and we want to actually set these values. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do like we did down here, where is it? Uh, yeah, sorry, the commands next configuration. We want to make an interactive, uh, an interactivity configuration. So we're just gonna say client, Dot use interactivity, a new interactivity configuration, and we can set some default values. Now, personally, I don't actually care about any of these. Like, pagination is to do with pages. So, if you have um, an embed that has overflowing text, what you can actually do is you can put it onto another essentially, essentially a page of an embed, and you can go between those pages by reacting with a left or a right arrow. Now, we're not going to bother using that this video. Um, poll behavior is if you do a poll, what happens afterwards? Well, you can set it to basically delete the emojis or keep them and default is to be uh, deleted and it's default by default, obviously. So I don't see why this exists. It depends on whether you want to get rid of them or not. I'm personally just gonna leave that as it is. And then you can set the timeout, which is like if you're waiting for a response, um, maybe it's a poll or maybe it's just waiting for a message response. How long before we stop waiting, right? Like how long do we wait for? Now by default, it's one minute, but I might wanna set it to, for example, two minutes or five minutes or whatever. So you say from minutes, from seconds, it's up to you, right? So if I go to from minutes and set that to five, it's now five minutes. Just make sure you don't put too many semicolons on. Uh, and that's it. Now, if you just want it as one minute, you can actually get rid of this and just leave it as it is. That means all use all the defaults. Uh, I'm personally gonna change it so we can use a time span of one minute. But then again, that's the default. So let's go for something like two, why not? Okay, and now we're actually using interactivity. So let's go and make a command that actually uses this now. Okay, so let's go over to fun commands and just make some example commands so I can show you guys how to use it now. So if we make a new command, public async task, and then we'll call this command um, like response, right? I don't know, response. And then, whoops, we'll put the tag command response. And this will take in a command context and I think that'll be it. So command context ctx. So we want to first of all, get access to the interactivity thing. So we'll say var interactivity is equal to context dot get uh, interactivity. And it'll ask us to import it. We'll like to import the namespace so we can get interactivity. Oh, sorry, it's context dot client dot get interactivity. There we go. Uh, if this doesn't show up for you right away, you'll have to import a D sharp plus interactivity. Um, my compiler never never used to do that. I mean, sorry, my ID Visual Studio never used to do that for you. Uh, if you put in a namespace that you didn't have, you'd have to manually add it, but now it automatically does it. It depends what version you're on, I think, um, unless it's just always been a setting I didn't realize. But anyway, we've got the interactivity, and now we want to say, well, let's um, await interactivity dot, and then we've got all the things we can do here. So wait for typing, wait for reaction, wait for message. You can do all these different things. Now let's say wait for message. So we want to wait for a message and then we pass in a, a predicate. So basically, this is how you can say the, um, you can define who has to send the message, where the message has to be sent. If you don't define anything, well, it doesn't work, but the easiest thing you could do is just say X where true. And that would basically mean no matter what, it will always work, meaning uh, it doesn't care essentially um, who says it or where it's said, just a message that the bot is aware of. But we wanna basically say, well, the message has to be at least in the channel that it was sent in, right? So we'll say context uh, x where x dot channel is equal to context dot channel. So the x is the message that it's finding. And so basically we're saying, well, the message I have found must be from the channel that this command was used in, okay? So as soon as we get a message, let's just configure away false. It's up to you if you do this or not. It's just a, it's a 
it's beneficial, but only slightly, and some people argue it isn't, and it could get into that whole discussion. I'm not actually fully aware whether it matters anymore, but apparently it was a thing you used to have to do, and I'm going to keep doing it until I like know for sure that I don't have to do it anymore. Um, but it doesn't matter. If you took it out, it would still work. I know that for sure. But um, now that we've waited for a message, this next line only gets ran once a message has been sent. Um, maybe we want to, I don't know, say the message back. So I'm going to say var uh, message is equal to this. And then we can say we've got a message here and it's of type uh, disc, well, result dot discord message or whatever. So we can say, um, let's send a message back to the channel. Await context dot channel dot send message async. The content will be message dot result dot content. So uh, I should probably call this wait message dot result yeah yeah okay so message is just the thing that was waited for the result is i guess the message itself because you can they have a built-in interactivity thing for reactions and messages and other things they've made a struct interactivity result here which is of type t meaning t, t can be anything right it's ours is a discord message but it could also be a discord emoji um that's why result will then get you the thing, which is a Discord message. Content is the actual string of a message. Remember, messages have also the person who wrote them, the channel they were uh, sent in, and all this a lot. But content is um, the actual message itself. So we send that back to the channel. So if I run the bot now, I'll skip ahead to see you guys in a minute. Okay, so over in Discord here, I've got it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the channel and say question mark response. And I'm waiting. And now I've got, I think I said it's two minutes, two minutes to respond. And then if I go something like this and press enter the bot then responds with the exact same thing i said so now i've actually got a thing where the bot can wait for a message and respond okay that's that's the main part of this right that's what you want you want to be able to send a message and get it back and then do stuff with it now obviously this example of just sending it back to the user isn't very useful but you can obviously do a lot of things with this like you can take it in and then check oh is it this kind of data or let's store it in this variable and do something with it later right save it to a database i don't know you can do whatever you want with it right now let's stop this and do one other quick example okay so let's do the same thing but with an emoji so i can show you how to basically like we'll wait for reactions it's very simple let's just copy and paste the actual command itself and we'll call this one uh, respond message and we'll call this one respond emoji or something right respond emoji just make sure you name the functions differently. So this is respond message. And while we're at it, we'll actually call this reaction because that's the technical name. Um, an emoji uses a reaction as an emoji, that kind of thing. So we've got this reaction. We get our interactivity. We wait for reaction async where it's sent in a channel, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then rather than the content, if you look, the result is an emoji. Uh, this dot result is emoji. Now, because it's an emoji, Sorry, uh, wait, let me actually make sure. So message is a message reaction add event. Okay, result dot, oh, here we go. Sorry, result dot emoji. So we can now send, send the emoji. I mean, maybe we want to actually send it to string. I think, no, I think it's smart enough to know if we send emojis, it does it like this. So let's go run the bot and just see what it's like. Okay, so I've gone back to it and I'm gonna type uh, respond reaction. And then I'm going to uh, respond to my own message with the OK hand. And the bot responds with an OK hand emoji. It sends it to the server. So it's actually collected that emoji. Now it can do stuff with it. So obviously that's really useful. And the way I've done it is I've said, make sure that the emoji is in the same channel that this was sent in. Well, maybe you want to specify the message it has to be sent on. Maybe it has to be on the command it was sent. Or maybe it's some other message you send it has to be reacted to. So it's completely up to you. You just have to set this in here to be the condition for your thing. Now, I'm not going to show any more examples, but if you wanted it to be, for example, in the channel and something else, right? You might want to say where x dot channel is a channel and uh, it's by the person. You just then add on to it, right? And x dot. Um, so then, obviously, you can say client emoji do, do, do user. You can make it be say x dot user is equal to context dot user. So the person doing the reaction has to be the person who did the command. Maybe, right? It's up to you. There. So. Just do whatever you want, right? Make of this as you will. Have some fun making some commands, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to ask any questions down below. We'll move on to make some more practical examples in the future. But uh, as always, the code to this is down below. You can go to my repository, go get it. Um, leave video suggestions as well in the comments. If you haven't already left, like, and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. Now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.